volunteer at your local school. My friends here are all better when you come on and volunteer for talent. Her day job and Wheel of Fortune, and I'm sure Banna is proud. We are. I'll see you tomorrow. We have seasonal sunshine once again tomorrow, so another warm day. We'll also see more clouds moving in, but keeping it dry. Then on Friday, there could be some light showers in the morning. Still a pretty cloudy day. And then the main story is over the weekend, and that's when temperatures will cool down significantly. A cold start to your Sunday morning. I'll have all those details coming up. Right now on News Channel 6 and 7, finding solutions to ongoing problems. A local leader has got a look inside the Webster Detention Center. Hear what they have to say about the jail. Plus, it is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Local law enforcement gets special training to handle cases. We'll take you there. And the local nonprofit is aiming to improve the living conditions of local homeowners. We'll tell you how as your News at 7 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 7. Good evening, everyone. You're watching News Channel 6 at 7. I'm Dee Griffin. Thanks so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins as Augusta leaders get a first-hand look at issues at the Richmond County Jail. The mayor and three commissioners joined the sheriff to tour the Webster Detention Center in response to complaints. The sheriff says the facility is overcrowded and understaffed. He says the jail needs a new $38 million pod to house an additional 190 inmates. But there's no funding, he says, because the request has been removed from the last two sales tax project lists. We tried to plan for it again. The last two slots actually were denied. And unfortunately, now we've gotten to the point where um, you know, we're in a crisis situation, and, and I, I wanted to give them an opportunity to look at it and see it and say, look, we're just not throwing money um, at the situation. Um, this is something as a matter of safety. The Central Services Department estimates that addressing all maintenance issues at the current jail will have cost roughly 5 to $10 million. State and local domestic violence support organizations are in Augusta this week for law enforcement training. Maria Smith has a look at the goals of the training. And we're losing hundreds of lives. It's approximately one person every other day in Georgia that dies from a domestic violence related fatality. Carolyn Brooks is the review project manager for the Georgia Commission on Family Violence and says that's just the minimum, the ones they know about for sure. That's why Wednesday's training helped to remind trainees of what they might not see. How often is domestic violence occurring? How is it getting reported? When it's not being reported, what are the, what are the barriers? Domestic violence fatalities have gone up uh, over the last four years, 39%. And domestic violence murder-suicides have gone up over 75%. Safe Homes of Augusta says one in four women and one in seven men are physically abused by an intimate partner during their lifetime. And event leaders say law enforcement is usually the first to greet a victim. With them understanding why they may stay, why they can't just leave, I think it would really help in that situation, to, and especially to give the victim the confidence to be able to call. Event leaders say that the impact of domestic violence is notable and want everyone to know the signs. And so we want everybody to know what those red flags are so they can see them and respond appropriately. So that includes... Uh, advocates, law enforcement, prosecutors, judges, we train all, every discipline um, you can think of. Safe Homes of Augusta says victims commonly leave and return to their abusive relationship up to seven times before permanently leaving. They're doing a great job in teaching why victims stay, what is domestic violence, and so many times many people don't know what that is. If you know or are someone who's experienced domestic abuse, Safe Homes of Augusta encourages you to call their crisis hotline. That number is on our website at WJBF.com. In Augusta, Bria Smith, WJBF, News Channel 6. A local organization is working to help save the lives of victims. The Turnaround Foundation is hosting the Love Doesn't Hurt Run Walk on October 14th at 8.30 in the morning. Money raised from the event will help victims of domestic violence. And for more information, just go to our website. Well, time now for a first look at our weather. And here's meteorologist Jenna Petrachi. And it was a nice day, a little hotter or warmer than I expected for this.
time of year, but I have no complaints. We're not in the 90s. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, Dia. I was playing pickleball, and oh. I was like, man, it's kind of warm, kind of hot, yeah. you could even say. Yeah. We weren't in the 90s, of course, but the mid-80s still felt pretty warm. At least we had a nice breeze coming in, though, and skies were mostly sunny. Just a little bit of a haze we're seeing now on our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam over the river. Overall, a pretty nice night. As I mentioned, we made it into the mid-80s. 85 was our high here in Augusta. 57 was our low temperature earlier this morning, so pretty close to average for this time of the year. Right now, we're in the 70s for the most part. A bit of a variety of temperatures, though. 79 in McCormick, 77 in Barnwell. Only 71 in Augusta, but still 80 degrees in Millen. Wrightsville, 80, 75 in Edgefield. The sun is getting ready to set, so that's why those temperatures are a little bit all over the place. But winds are coming in from the northeast, 5 miles per hour now in Augusta and Aiken. We'll start to see those winds settle down, and we'll see more clouds move in. Notice this large area of cloud cover just to our west, along with some batches of showers and thunderstorms. A very active night across Oklahoma along a low-pressure system and cold front. And this is what we call a reinforcing cold front. This forms behind the initial front, and this is bringing in some Arctic air from Canada. And you can see now temperatures are much cooler in that location, seeing the 60s, as opposed to Dallas, Texas, 92 degrees. So down in Texas, we have severe thunderstorm warnings ongoing, along with a watch, as opposed to up in, say, Bismarck, North Dakota, a freeze watch tonight. So some very cold air will be moving into much of the country, and it will actually impact us this weekend. Saturday morning, waking up to 60 degrees, then a 15 drop in temperature, 15 degree drop in temperatures on Sunday morning. So I'll have a look at exactly how long this cold air will last coming up. Back to you, Dave. All right, thanks so much, Jenna. We'll see you then. A group is on a mission to help rebuild parts of the CSRA. The officers with the Aiken Department of Public Safety say they hope opportunities like this encourage meaningful conversation within the community. Well, up next, we'll share the story of Delora Scott, who has overcome breast cancer. Stay with us. Hey there, Georgia. Georgia. It's a great time to get your lawn in shape with a new mower from Davis Appliance and Furniture. We offer no credit needed financing and delivery options to meet your needs. For the brand you trust at the lowest prices in town, visit us at Davis Appliance and Furniture. It's bow time. A leg and thigh dinner for three is four. Good luck in play on, Georgia. It's a great time to get your lawn in shape with a new mower from Davis Appliance and Furniture. We offer no credit needed financing and delivery options to meet your needs. For the brands you trust at the lowest prices in town, visit us at Davis Appliance and Furniture. Terry from Carolina. Throughout the years, News Channel 6 has been honored to impact the lives of thousands of families in need. It's our way of giving back to the community we proudly serve. Sponsored by Aiken Regional Medical Centers and Bath Fitter. It's bow time. A leg and thigh dinner from Bojangles for just five ninety nine. A leg and thigh dinner from Bojangles for just five ninety nine. A deal so good it's worth repeating, but it won't last long. So much flavor. Eat and repeat while it lasts. So much flavor. It's bow time. The Rooms to Go Fall Holiday Sale starts today. Six days to get 60-month interest-free financing. Six days to save big with interest-free payments spread out over 60 months. That's right. We pay the interest for you. Shop stylish living rooms, bedrooms, dining rooms, and more. All at low sale prices. Plus 60-month interest-free financing. At Rooms to Go, you get it all. But hurry. You only have six days to shop. Six days to save. With 60-month interest-free financing, the Rooms to Go Fall Holiday Sale is going on now. It's the perfect time to update your living space with a new sofa and love seat set from Davis Appliance and Furniture. Or update your indoor appliances with no credit needed financing. For the brands you trust at the lowest prices in town, visit us at Davis Appliance and Furniture. Throughout October, News Channel 6 is sharing stories of breast cancer survival. Tonight, we introduce you to Delora Scott. Tiffany Hobbs sat down with her as she shared her journey from diagnosis to advocacy. In 2016, Dolores Scott decided to hold off on having a fluid-filled cyst removed. By 2018, the mass was giving her trouble, so she went to see her doctor. And it was actually breast cancer. An MRI revealed that she also had a mass on the other side, and other tests showed she needed her gallbladder removed. Bilateral mastectomy, gallbladder, then chemo, then radiation, so that pretty much took my entire 2018. Scott says the demands on her body were heavy. 
physically that's where I learned um, why they tell you that you're fighting cancer. You fight to eat because you're not hungry and the food doesn't taste good. You don't have an appetite. You fight to um, function during the day because you're so incredibly exhausted from the chemo. You fight to go to sleep at night because your bones hurt from the treatment. You know, there are all kinds of things that you fight. Emotionally, Scott said it was hard dealing with the physical changes when all she wanted to do was feel normal. Still, she says her support team made all the difference. The blossoming of her and her husband's relationship is something she says she will always cherish. We just got so close. He took such good care of me and sat right next to me through the whole thing. And I just gained such an incredible picture of how much he loved me and cared for me. Um, so that, to me, was huge. Scott says for a time she tried to forget 2018 ever happened until she heard about the Miracle Mile walk. I love the mission of the Miracle Mile and so that was probably the first time that I ever really thought, all right, I'll wear pink for this. <laughs> For three years, Scott has been paying to support Ford by joining Piedmont Augusta's Miracle Mile Walk. Each year, her team has grown for a single benefit, helping women gain access to life-saving mammograms. Every time I write that, it just kind of gives me a little bit of chills because, gosh, if you can't afford it and you can't get a mammogram, how are you supposed to know that you need to be treated? So um, I think that is what keeps me going. As they settle into this chapter of their lives, Scott says she and her husband are considering what's next. We want to spend time with our grandkids. We want to, um, you know, see our families, travel some. We know we don't have any huge career aspirations anymore now. We just want to get to the point where we just relax and enjoy life and enjoy each other, enjoy our family, enjoy traveling, see things that we haven't seen before. And when I'm retired, Miracle Mom can have me. <laughs> In North Augusta, Tiffany Hobbs, WJBS, News Channel 6. Well, Piedmont Augusta's Miracle Mile Walk is on Saturday, October 21st. For more information on how to get involved, just visit us at WJBS.com. Well, still ahead, after the cool weather, we'll take you to the mass shooting in Baltimore, Maryland, yesterday. We'll be right back. Ready to develop more than a nice career. Now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live Viper 6. Good Thursday, or good Wednesday evening. We've had beautiful weather all this week. Really not many changes. It's been pretty consistent every day. Nice and warm in the afternoons, cool at night, and that'll be the case for tonight and tomorrow as well. The one difference is that we are seeing more cloud cover, and that's what's outside now on our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam. Clouds are rolling in. Beautiful sunset, though, over in North Augusta. Sitting at 71 degrees here in town with a 5 mile per hour wind, dew point of 65, so a little bit dry outside, not much moisture around with temperatures in those upper 70s to low 80s. 77 in Crawfordville and Washington, 79 in McCormick, and 75 now in Bardwell. So there's those clouds streaming in from the west, some pockets of showers and storms out there as well, especially over in Oklahoma. Some very active weather all the way down into North Texas as well along that low pressure system. So that's a very long cold front. And behind it, we have what we call a reinforcing cold front that's bringing in some Arctic air from Canada. And even though this is far away now, this will actually impact us as we go into our weekend. So let's look at these pattern changes. We have high pressure over us now. Notice the orange color here. It's still going to be warm on our Thursday. This cold front will come through on Friday, though, and will bring us even more cloud cover and the chance of some morning showers and some late afternoon heavier rain. Then on Saturday, that second front will push through. And notice this dip in the jet stream here. Some very cold air will be coming in as far south as even into Florida. So a very chilly morning in store for us on Sunday. So those temperatures will fall into the 40s here in the CSRA, 30s to our north, and 50s even down into, say, Jacksonville, Gainesville, Florida. That front will actually be headed towards Florida. So definitely our first powerful front, you could say, of the fall season. Not when it comes to the rain, but just that significant drop in temperatures. So 46, once again, Sunday morning, 43 
for your Monday. That'll be the coldest day of the week. And slowly but surely, we'll start to warm up. But back to you tomorrow, a mostly clear start, partly cloudy throughout the day, 83 degrees by the 3 o'clock hour. And let's pick things up on Friday at 5 o'clock in the morning. It will be a cloudy day. You may want your umbrella or rain jacket for your Friday morning commute. Not expecting any heavy rain here, but just those light showers and drizzle. Then by the afternoon, most of these storms coming in from the west will weaken by the time they reach us. But we do have the possibility of some heavier downpours late at night on Friday. Our lows tonight will be in the mid to upper 50s and for tomorrow, topping off right around average once again, 84 in Augusta. And over the next 10 days, we will drop into the 70s starting on Saturday. It will be a breezy day and, of course, cooler as we go into our Sunday morning. Back to beautiful sunshine, though, which will stick around through next week. And we will warm back up to 80 degrees on Tuesday. Lows will go back into the 50s. And we'll be right back. Your accident has caused you the biggest check possible. The WGBF Live Viper 6 Skyview Network is sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Low prices, big selection, and committed to quality customer service. Law enforcement is still searching for a suspect who opened fire on campus at Morgan State University last night during a homecoming week celebration. Police say there were likely multiple armed people at the event, and Wynn is in Baltimore with the latest. Baltimore police still searching for the person or persons behind the on-campus shooting at Morgan State University during its homecoming week celebration. There was at least more than one person with a weapon. The problem is the ballistics has to tell us how many guns there were that were shot. Investigators learning at least three people had a weapon, although it's not clear yet how many people opened fire. Police say it appears the incident stemmed from a dispute between two small groups. Five people who police believe were unintended targets were shot and wounded. Four of them students. We're in here scared for our lives, like wondering if we're going to live or die tonight. Dramatic video capturing SWAT teams going room by room searching for the shooter at the historically black college. Uh, Sophomore Stephen Corbin tells me he rushed to contact his friends who were at the event when he started getting active shooter alerts. Just emotional. Just, I didn't know what to think. Like, are you okay? Especially when you're not texting back immediately. University President David Wilson releasing a statement saying it was so disappointing to learn of what took place. But rest assured, our Morgan family is strong. This as dozens of HBCUs, including MSU, have received racially motivated bomb threats since 2022. Baltimore's mayor calling on Congress and the White House to help end the gun violence. Uh, the horrific act of violence is a sickening uh, a reminder for all of us of how commonplace uh, these incidents have become. The university canceled classes today and is reassessing plans for the rest of the homecoming week. At least one person injured in the shooting yesterday has been released from the hospital. M. Wood, ABC News, Baltimore. We're putting our foot down to keep our feet still alive. Lazy boy, long live the lazy. Well, Netflix leaders say they plan to raise prices once the actor's strike ends. The Wall Street Journal reports it's part of a plan to raise prices for its ad-free service around the globe. Netflix hasn't said exactly how big the price hike will be. The prices for all ad-free streaming services have gone up by 25% over the last year. Yeah, a lot of people on social media are saying they're going to ditch Netflix, but I mean, when they have your good shows on there, it's like, It's ugh, so hard. hard. Luckily, I use my parents' account, Oh. But. Yeah, I do pay for Hulu and Peacock and Paramount. You can't keep up. There's so can't many. Keep up. Well, for a forecast, we have nice weather once again. Tomorrow still warm, but then the cool down over the weekend. All right, that'll do it for us. Have a good night. another warm day. The difference is that we will have more clouds and then same situation for Friday. Warm with the cloud cover and also a few showers possible followed by a big cool down over the weekend. I'll have all those details coming up. Right now on News Channel 6 at 10, information for parents and caregivers to keep your children from getting sick this time of year. We'll hear from a nurse. Plus the Georgia Cancer Center and Augusta University teaming up to help people fighting cancer. And Augusta leaders taking a tour of the Webster Detention Center. 
Commissioners talk about the needs for that jail as News Channel 6 at 10 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 10 on MeTV. Good evening, everybody. I'm Brad Means. And I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thank you for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins as back to school doesn't have to mean back to being sick. Tonight, we talked to a nurse about how to keep your children as healthy as possible. Here's Nikita Dennis. If at the first sign of a symptom, don't take them to school. Please bring them to the facility or to the um, urgent care and see what's going on with them prior to introducing them back into the school. Gina Anderson with Physician United Urgent Care in Augusta says, now that kids are back in the classroom, their facility is seeing a variety of illnesses. When they come in, we test them for a gamut of different um, viruses, and um, we try to educate the parent on what to do and what to not, not to do, depending on what the diagnosis is. Tonsillitis, strep throat, and common colds are the main illnesses doctors see when kids are going back to school, along with other viruses. We've been seeing some nausea and vomiting, and some diarrhea as well. And now the seasons are changing. We've been seeing a lot of sinusitis, which is essentially a sinus infection. Anderson says the goal is to keep parents informed on measures to take while at home to prevent sickness from spreading in schools. We always tell parents, if you can, keep them away from school um, until the symptoms subside and um, to make sure you tell your kids not to put their hands in their mouths and to wash their hands. Anderson also says regular checkups with your child's primary doctor is also important. In Augusta, Nikita Dennis, WJBF News Channel 6. The Georgia Cancer Center and AIDS, Francis Marion. It is time now for our first check of the weather. Here's meteorologist Jenna Petracci. Well, it was another nice day. We had some clouds, but for the most part, a nice sunny one once again with warm temperatures. Now skies are clear, taking a live look at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview cam outside the station. Another dry night, no rainfall today, and we had near average temperatures topping off at 85 degrees earlier this afternoon. A low temperature of 57. Nowhere near that low temperature set back in 1974 of 34, but we'll be getting much closer to that as we go into this weekend. Stay with us for all those details. But for now, pretty mild night. We're seeing low 60s through low 70s. Warmer in Allendale at 70 degrees. 63 though here in Augusta, 70 as well in Swainsboro. Wrightsville in those upper 60s, 67 in both Lincolnton and Edgefield. It was a breezy day. Northeast wind still coming in, but much lighter now. Only up to five miles per hour, both Aiken and down in Sylvania. The rest of us under calm winds. And we will start to see more clouds streaming in tomorrow morning. Notice a big area of cloud cover across the south and up into the Midwest. We have a cold front that is bringing a lot of active weather across northern Texas and parts of Oklahoma. And behind this, we have a reinforcing cold front. This is bringing in some cold air and also some showers as well up in the Dakotas and over into Montana. That's where there's going to be some very cold temperatures tonight. Right now, we're already into the 50s, much warmer where we are, but up there, there is a freeze watch going into effect and also that severe thunderstorm watch down in Texas. So some active weather out towards our west. We'll be pretty calm once again tomorrow though, but then the big drop in temperatures comes this weekend, waking up Saturday morning to 60 degrees, right around where we have been, but by Sunday morning, we'll be 15 degrees cooler than that. Now, how long will the chilly temperatures last? I'll have those details coming up in the full forecast, but back to you. Jenna, thanks. Augusta leaders touring the Richmond County, the old cell block lights are in need of repair. They're not secure. Inmates are actually tearing them apart and turning the pieces into weapons. State and local domestic violence agencies came together in Augusta today for law enforcement training. Safe Homes of Augusta says one in four women and one in seven men are physically abused by an intimate partner during their lifetime. And the event leaders say law enforcement is usually the first to greet a victim. The goal for Wednesday's training was to further educate law enforcement about signs to look for and the questions to ask once they meet a victim. So we want everybody to know what those red flags are so that they can see them and respond appropriately. So that includes uh, advocates, 
law enforcement, prosecutors, judges, we train all every discipline um, you can think of to recognize these things so that they can respond appropriately within their role, whatever their profession is. We have more information and local resources on our website. Just look for this story. Still ahead, Jenna has a full look at your forecast. Plus, some people in Aiken had coffee with a cop today. Details on that event with Aiken Public Safety Officers as coverage you can count on continues. It was another warm day, but overall pretty much near average for this time of the year. Definitely not too hot, but definitely not cool yet either. Over the weekend, we'll start to see some temperature relief or heat relief, and I'll have those details in just a moment. But in the meantime, looking good outside, here's a live look at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam over in Waynesboro. It's another cool night, 63 degrees, calm winds point of 61. The weather has been pretty calm over the last few days. Not many changes for now. Skies are still mostly clear for everyone with those temperatures in those low to mid 60s, but warmer down towards the south of Burke County. 70 in Waynesboro, 71 in Sylvania. So still some 70s on our map, but tomorrow morning we'll all drop to around that 60 degree mark with more clouds moving in from the west. So notice we do have a front that is producing a lot of showers and thunderstorms across much of Oklahoma and northern Texas. That's where there's a severe thunderstorm watch ongoing and also a freeze watch up in parts of the Dakotas. This is a secondary front coming in, bringing in some Arctic air from way up north. So this is going to head our way, believe it or not, as we go into the weekend. So we'll see some major pattern changes. We've been under a ridge of high pressure. Notice the warm temperatures here when we see the orange. That's means it's going to be pretty warm so that'll be the case once again for Friday but look at this system getting really strong grabbing a lot of cold air from Canada and this will be coming in behind this cold front so we have a big dip in the jet stream here that cold air will continue to sag down towards the south Saturday night into our Sunday morning and that's when you'll wake up and you'll really feel the chill in the air it'll be noticeably cooler with us falling into the 40s throughout much of the CSRA 50s down in southern Georgia, even into parts of Florida, and 30s to the north of us. So we'll be in the 40s not only on Sunday morning, but all the way through Tuesday. Monday will be our coldest day of the week, 43 degrees when you wake up and head to work. So you'll definitely want to have those jackets and sweaters ready to go. Do it all. Now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live Viper 6. It was another warm day, but overall pretty much near average for this time of the year. Definitely not too hot, but definitely not cool yet either. Over the weekend, we'll start to see some temperature relief or heat relief, and I'll have those details in just a moment. But in the meantime, looking good outside, here's a live look at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam over in Waynesboro. It's another cool night, 63 degrees, calm winds, dew point of 61. The weather has been pretty calm over the last few days. Not many changes for now. Skies are still mostly clear for everyone with those temperatures in those low to mid 60s, but warmer down towards the south of Burke County, 70 in Waynesboro, 71 in Sylvania. So still some 70s on our map, but tomorrow morning we'll all drop to around that 60 degree mark with more clouds moving in from the west. So notice we do have a front that is producing a lot of showers and thunderstorms across much of Oklahoma and northern Texas. That's where there's a severe thunderstorm watch ongoing and also a freeze watch. Up in parts of the Dakotas, this is a secondary front coming in, bringing in some Arctic air from way up north. So this is going to head our way, believe it or not, as we go into the weekend. So we'll see some major pattern changes. We've been under a ridge of high pressure. Notice the warm temperatures here when we see the orange. That means it's going to be pretty warm. So that'll be the case once again for Friday. But look at this system getting really strong, grabbing a lot of cold air from Canada. And this will be coming in behind this cold front. So we have a big dip in the jet stream here. That cold air will continue to sag down towards the south Saturday night into our Sunday morning. And that's when you'll wake up and you'll really feel the chill in the air. It'll be noticeably cooler with us falling into the 40s throughout much of the CSRA. 50s down in southern Georgia, even into parts of Florida. And 30s to the 
north of us. So we'll be in the 40s not only on Sunday morning, but all the way through Tuesday. Monday will be our coldest day of the week, 43 degrees when you wake up and head to work. So you'll definitely want to have those jackets and sweaters ready to go. But you won't need them by the afternoon. Our high temperatures will be a little bit cooler over the weekend, but not much different than what it's going to be tomorrow. So notice we're starting out in the mid-50s, climbing to 83 degrees by 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then by Friday, a pretty cloudy day with some light showers possible early in the morning. This will continue until around 11, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And then by 5 o'clock, we'll actually see those clouds start to break up a bit and we'll be dry going into our Saturday, so that'll be after the front pushes through. Our lows tonight, once again, in those mid to upper 50s, and then tomorrow, another near average day, or average high being 83, we'll be at 84 in Augusta, and your 10-day forecast showing us go down to 77 on Saturday. It will also be pretty breezy with that front, so that'll help make it feel a little bit cooler, and then, of course, our first colder morning starts on Sunday, continues through Tuesday. And then we'll warm up to the 80s again next week. So still not feeling too much like fall yet. We yeah. still have the 80s coming and going. but um, All right. A little bit of summer still hanging around. Yep. Thanks, Jenna. Some people who live in Aiken started this day off with coffee and conversation. Police officers with the Aiken Department of Public Safety took some time out of their normal schedules to talk with people in the community over a cup of coffee. You see those cups there. Just a chance for folks to get to know the officers, ask questions, and tell them of any community concerns. Well, if you have a situation in your community and you, you know, want somebody to know about it, um, law enforcement, an event like this is where you can come talk with the officers and let them know if maybe they're not aware of things going on in your community. Officers with the Aiken Department of Public Safety say they hope opportunities like this encourage meaningful conversation within the community. Still ahead, the Supreme Court hearing a case that could determine who can sue over disabilities. Details on how this could impact people with disabilities as coverage you can count on continues. Drugs. At Tile Center, we deliver exquisite tile and stone, expert advice, innovations in materials, and extraordinary value. We've been bringing your visions to life since 1961. So, why Tile Center? Well, Tile Center, once again, is the winner of the Best of Home Award. Come see why for yourself at any of our locations, Augusta, Martinez, Statesboro, or Aiken, or online at TileCenter.com. Tile Center, your tile and stone expert. Every day... All the tools to diagnose and repair those modern car problems. Just let the butler do it. If you've been arrested for a DUI in Georgia, you may only have 30 days to protect your license or your privilege to drive here. Hi, I'm Tiffany Duncan of DUI Duncan, the DUI firm here in Augusta. Visit our website at DUIDuncan.com to see what we've done to help so many drivers. If you've been arrested for a DUI in Georgia, call me now for a free consultation. Well, the firm, of course, cannot guarantee results, we do guarantee hard work and fast action. Remember the name, DUI Duncan. And last but not least, a lifeguard shortage has been hitting an Alabama community hard. When one Birmingham grandmother heard about this, she immediately thought of her grandson. Now they're working together. David Lamb has more. I tell you what, um, lifeguard right now is really good. Lane's all filled, everybody's behaving. Martha Dawson and her grandson Davis Keep a watchful eye on the pool as lifeguards at the Shade Valley YMCA. An idea that came from this grandmother's desire to help her grandson land his first job. I thought that being a lifeguard would be a really good job for a 15-year-old to have. What Martha did not bargain for was being recruited to serve herself. A surprise that she calls a great gift. It's amazing. Um... It, I can't really put into words how much that means to me. It um, really totally connects me to my grandson. It's something we enjoy together. And then again, it's sort of emphasizing the idea, don't just give lip service to something worthwhile, but actually do it. The pair is now going on two years protecting the pool, an experience that Davis says has allowed him to see his grandmother in a whole new life. 
it's an experience that a lot of people don't really get to get. Um, we were, I also allowed, just was able to hear more of the person rather than just my grandmother, which is really nice. It has actually made my day spending the morning with you. <laughs> For Dawson, the call of duty has forged a connection that goes well beyond family ties. He's not only my grandson, but he's my best friend. And Davis says time spent with his grandmother gives him a goal to strive for. She's uh, an example of what I want to be like when I grow old. Because she's always doing something. You can't stop her. What a great relationship. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, she's yeah. a beautiful, good swimmer, too. I yeah. know. That'll keep her young. Yeah, really. I love seeing older people still stay active and make memories and later in their life. It's so cool. Yeah, it really is inspiring. Well, for a 10-day forecast, we'll see a little bit more cloud cover tomorrow. Still staying warm, making it to 84 degrees in the afternoon, falling to 77 on Saturday. But notice those low temperatures, 45 on Sunday morning, only making it to 70 on Sunday afternoon. And then we'll continue to see the low 40s over the next couple of days when you wake up. And then back to sunshine, though, so it'll be beautiful still. And then warming up to 80 on Tuesday. So warm weather will still be with us just this brief cool down. All right, Jenna, thanks a lot for that, and we do appreciate you watching. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition of News Channel 6. The news continues at the top of the hour on News Channel 6 at 11. Hogan's Heroes is next, right here on BT. Channel 6 at 11. Good evening, everybody. I'm Brad Means. And I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thanks so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins as... It's time now for our first check of the forecast. Let's check in with meteorologist Jenna Petracci. Couple more warm days to get through, right? That's right. We're still staying in the 80s for now, but we will get a little bit more heat relief as we go into the weekend. It's going to be a beautiful one and actually a little chilly in the morning hours and we'll have those details in just a moment but right now let's take a look at our almanac for the day we reached a high of 85 degrees that is pretty much near our average for this time of the year and same situation with our low we were at 57 no rain in augusta it was a nice dry day for everyone in the csra and now it's nice and dry tonight as well under clear skies it is wjpf news channel six it's time now for our first check of the forecast. Let's check in with meteorologist Jenna Petracci. Couple more warm days to get through, right? That's right. We're still staying in the 80s for now, but we will get a little bit more heat relief as we go into the weekend. It's going to be a beautiful one and actually a little chilly in the morning hours. And we'll have those details in just a moment. But right now, let's take a look at our almanac for the day. We reached a high of 85 degrees. That is pretty much near our average for this time of the year, and same situation with our low. We were at 57. No rain in Augusta. It was a nice dry day for everyone in the CSRA. 
And now it's nice and dry tonight as well under clear skies. Here's a live look. It's time now for our first check of the forecast. Let's check in with meteorologist Jenna Petracci. Couple of more warm days to get through, right? That's right. We're still staying in the 80s for now, but we will get a little bit more heat relief as we go into the weekend. It's going to be a beautiful one and actually a little chilly in the morning hours. And we'll have those details in just a moment. But right now, let's take a look at our almanac for the day. We reached a high of 85 degrees. That is pretty much near our average for this time of the year. And same situation with our low. We were at 57. No rain in Augusta. It was a nice dry day for everyone in the CSRA. And now it's nice and dry tonight as well under clear skies. Here's a live look at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam over in Waynesboro. Our temperatures are in the low to upper 60s, 62 in Augusta, 68 in Allendale, Sylvania at 67, Aiken here at 65, 66 in Edgefield, and 67 now in Waynesboro with winds definitely on the calmer side coming in from the northeast at 5 miles per hour in Aiken. Zero, though, in Augusta and Evans, two in Waynesboro. So those calm winds will allow our temperatures to fall off into the 50s as we go into the overnight hours. But we will have more clouds headed our way. This will keep us a little bit warmer for tomorrow night into our Friday. We have a system here, low pressure over around the border of Texas and Oklahoma, producing some very gusty winds now right around Dallas, heavy rainfall into Oklahoma. And then behind this front, we have a secondary front. This is coming in from Canada, bringing in the Arctic air, going to get very cold up there tonight. Notice temperatures now are in the 50s, will continue to fall. Down in Texas, 80s still, and for us, 60s across pretty much the majority of the eastern coast. Now, there is a freeze watch for parts of North Dakota, and then that severe thunderstorm watch for the Dallas down the Waco area. For us, a very calm night, but we'll start to feel the cold temperatures as we go into Sunday morning. It'll be a mild start on Saturday right at 60, and then a 15-degree drop-off for Sunday morning. So you definitely want to have some jackets and sweaters ready, and you may need to keep them around for a few days. Exactly how long this cold will last, I'll have those details coming up, but back to you. Thanks, Jenna. Augusta leaders get a first station on how to volunteer. Please go to our website, wjvf.com. State and local domestic violence agencies met together in Augusta today for law enforcement training. According to Safe Homes of Augusta, one in four women and one in seven men are physically abused by an intimate partner during their lifetime. Law enforcement is usually the first to talk to a victim. The goal for today's training was to further educate officers on signs to look for and questions to ask upon meeting a victim where they are. So we want everybody to know what those red flags are so that they can see them and respond appropriately. So that includes uh, advocates, law enforcement, prosecutors, judges. We train all, every discipline um, you can think of to recognize these things so that they can respond appropriately within their role, whatever their profession is. For more information and local resources, go to our website, wjbf.com. Up next, we're going to have the forecast for the rest of the work week with Jenna. And a local college and the Georgia Cancer Center are teaming up to help spread awareness. We'll be right back. The Live 5 or 6 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live 5 or 6. It was a beautiful day once again, nice and warm and cool tonight. Here's a live look at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview cam outside the station. We are at a temperature of 62 degrees. Winds are calm. Dew points also in the low 60s. And it's a little bit warmer down towards the south of Augusta, seeing those upper 60s from Wrightsville over into Bamberg. And a little bit cooler towards the northwest, 64 in Sparta, 63 now in Washington. With That will be approaching us, and that will bring a big cool down over the weekend. But for the now, just the clouds that we'll start to see tomorrow. And notice this big batch of rain from northern Texas into Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, getting some of this uh, heavy storm.
warms tonight and that will continue to push towards the east. Now behind this front, we have a secondary front. This is going to bring in some Arctic air from Canada. It's going to get very cold up in parts of the northwest and this cold air will continue to shift in our direction. So we'll have some major pattern changes over the next few days. For now, we've been under a ridge of high pressure and that's indicated here with these warm temperatures. But here comes the cold front along with this very strong low pressure system forming up in Canada. And that jet stream begins to dip down into parts of the Midwest and then gets down into the south as well. We can see that blue starting to creep into our area by Sunday morning. That's when it will begin to feel really chilly with a big drop in temperatures. So we'll be in the 40s across the CSRA and 50s even down towards the south along the Gulf Coast and down into Florida. Now, it won't just be Sunday, though. Over the next few days, those temperatures will continue to stay in the 40s. For the start of next work week, 43 on your Monday morning, that'll be the coldest day of the week, and then slowly but surely we will begin to warm up. But tomorrow, another nice warm day. Cool start, but then 83 degrees by 3 o'clock, partly cloudy and keeping it dry. But then by early Friday morning, we will have the possibility of drizzle and light rain moving through along with the cloudy skies. This is 9 o'clock on Friday, and then as we go into the lunch hour, those showers will begin to end. And you can see the clouds actually starting to break apart by Friday evening as we'll warm up again into those low 80s. But for tonight, a cool night, a little bit below average, and for tomorrow, right near average, that would be 83, and we'll be at 84 in Augusta. So pretty consistent across the entire CSRA. And your 10-day forecast showing that 30% chance of rain on Friday. Other than that, the week will be nice and dry, back to sunshine over the weekend with temperatures falling into the 70s, 77 on Saturday, 70 on Sunday, and of course those lows in the 40s. We'll look forward to that. All right, thank you, Jenna. Thanks, Jenna. The Georgia Cancer Center and a uh, Cancer. I think with the passion um, that the athleticism brings and the passion that our researchers, trainees, and young scientists bring bring to the table can synergize with each other um, to help increase awareness. So I'm really excited. The women's volleyball team will hold a here to win game Friday at 6 p.m. against Francis Marion. Still ahead, we'll look at the tragedy that happened last night. 5, 5 or 6 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live Viper 6. It was a beautiful day once again, nice and warm and cool tonight. Here's a live look at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam outside the station. We are at a temperature of 62 degrees. Winds are calm, dew points also in the low 60s. And it's a little bit warmer down towards the south of Augusta, seeing those upper 60s from Wrightsville over into Bamberg. And a little bit cooler towards the northwest, 64 in Sparta, 63 now in Washington with that will be approaching us and that'll bring a big cool down over the weekend but for the now just the clouds that we'll start to see tomorrow and notice this big batch of rain from northern Texas into Oklahoma Arkansas Missouri getting some of this uh, heavy storms tonight and that will continue to push towards the east now behind this front we have a secondary front this is going to bring in some arctic air from canada it's going to get very cold up in parts of the northwest and this cold air will continue to shift in our direction so we'll have some major pattern changes over the next few days for now we've been under a ridge of high pressure and that's indicated here with these warm temperatures but here comes the cold front along with this very strong low pressure system forming up in canada and that jet stream begins to dip down into parts of the Midwest and then gets down into the south as well. We can see that blue starting to creep into our area by Sunday morning. That's when it will begin to feel really chilly with a big drop in temperatures. So we'll be in the 40s across the CSRA and 50s even down towards the south along the Gulf Coast and down into Florida. Now, it won't just be Sunday, though. Over the next few days, those temperatures will continue to stay in the 40s. For the start of next work week, 43 on your Monday morning, that'll be the coldest day of the week. And then slowly but surely, we'll begin to warm up. But tomorrow, another nice warm day. Cool start, but then 83 degrees by 3 o'clock. Partly cloudy and keeping it dry. But then by early Friday morning, we will have the possibility of drizzle and light rain moving through along with the cloudy skies. This is 9 o'clock on Friday, and then as we go into the lunch hour, those showers will begin to end. And you can see the clouds actually starting to break apart by Friday evening 
as we'll warm up again into those low 80s. But for tonight, a cool night, a little bit below average, and for tomorrow, right near average, that would be 83, and we'll be at 84 in Augusta, so pretty consistent across the entire CSRA. And your 10-day forecast showing that 30% chance of rain on Friday. Other than that, the week will be nice and dry, back to sunshine over the weekend with temperatures falling into the 70s, 77 on Saturday, 70 on Sunday, and of course those lows in the 40s. We'll look forward to that. All right, thank you, Gemma. Thanks, John. The Georgia Cancer Center and AU Athletics are teaming up to help people with cancer in their Here to Win partnership. Throughout the season, the Georgia Cancer Center will have representatives at games to provide free screenings and give information about cancer prevention and detection. Athletes will promote awareness by talking about their own experiences with family members who have cancer. I think with the passion um, that the athleticism brings and the passion that our researchers, trainees, and young scientists bring, bring to the table can synergize with each other um, to help increase awareness. So I'm really excited. The women's volleyball team will hold a Here to Win game Friday at 6 p.m. against Francis Marion. Still ahead, we'll look at the tragedy that happened last night at Morgan State University. What Baltimore city leaders are saying about the incident. First, we do want to take a look at the winning numbers for tonight's South Carolina Lottery as we do at this time each evening. Pick three, four, one, four. And your pick four winning numbers tonight, 2189 Fireball 1. Get your home ready the finest in men's clothing. At Tile Center, our passion is for people and the living space they share. We totally understand that your home is a big part of your life, and our goals are to inspire your creativity. We'll help you feel comfortable about transforming your living space into a show place you can be really proud of. Come see why for yourself at any of our locations at Tile Center or online at tilecenter.com. Your tile and stone experts. Do you suffer from furniture in that store? The Y56 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. The Y56 Mobile App, downloaded today. Tonight, police are searching for suspects in a shooting at Morgan State University in Baltimore. Five people shot and wounded Tuesday night. Police say there may have been several armed people involved. M. Wynn has more. Baltimore police tracking down potentially multiple suspects who opened fire on campus at Morgan State University during homecoming week festivities. We know that there was more than one person with a weapon. It looks like it was probably a dispute between two smaller groups. Investigators say at least three people had a weapon, although it's not clear yet how many pulled a trigger. Five people, including four students, were shot and injured. All are expected to be okay, and all, police say, were likely unintended targets. God, they're going to have to shoot at Morgan State. Baltimore's mayor responding to some concerns that arose after video showed SWAT teams clearing room by room at the HBCU looking for the shooter. When you have uh, young black women and men who are running for their lives when the shooting happens and uh, there's a chance that that person that may have done that is inside that building, you have a duty to go through and search that building appropriately. The entire campus sheltering in place for several hours. Sophomore Stephen Forbin says he rushed to contact his friends who were at the event when he started getting active shooter alerts. Just emotional. Just, I didn't know what to think. Like, are you okay? Especially when you're not texting back immediately. All events planned around homecoming have been canceled or postponed until a suspect is in custody. Classes also canceled for the rest of the week. The university president, David Wilson, saying in a message, rest assured our Morgan family is strong. M1, ABC News, Baltimore. Former President Donald Trump was in court today to hear witness testimony in his fraud trial. The judge overseeing the case has agreed that the Attorney General proved Trump and two of his sons committed fraud by inflating their net worth. The trial is to determine how much will be paid in damages and penalties. Mr. Trump has maintained his innocence. They've weaponized justice in our country. This trial is a disgrace. This is just a continuation of the witch hunt that started the day I came down the escalator in Trump Tower. The former president and his co-defendant.
defendants have appealed the judge's ruling and are asking an appeals court to consider if the judge committed errors of law or fact. Coming up, our WJBF Scholar Athlete of the Week. And the Braves learn who their opponent's going to be in the National League Division Series this weekend in sports. Defend the roof. Holiday sale. Now through Monday. The Scholar Athlete Awards are brought to you by Jefferson Energy Cooperative, Revamp of Augusta, McDonald's, and WJBF News Channel 6. Now, WJBF sports coverage you can count on. The Braves waiting for their National League Division Series to get started this weekend against the Philadelphia Phillies, who took down the Marlins in the wild card. We know game one of the NLDS will be Saturday at Truist Park, game two on Monday if necessary. Game five would be in Atlanta on Saturday, October 14th. No game times have been announced just yet. Meanwhile, the Braves going through the second of three postseason workouts at Truist Park that are free for fans to attend. You do need a ticket, but we've got the link how you can do it at WJBF.com. And it's been a big hit. Thousands coming to watch simulated games and in-game situations. Gates open tomorrow at 4.30 for the final workout. Teams from the winningest time of University of South Carolina football are going to be honored at the November 4th game against Jacksonville State. The teams from 2010 to the 2013 season will be recognized on the field at halftime. Former head coach Steve Spurrier will address the crowd at the half. During their time in Carolina, these four teams amassed a 42-11 record, including three straight of identical 11-2 mark, the only 11-win seasons in school history. 17 guys went to the NFL draft in that span. And the Gamecocks, speaking of, and head coach Shane Beamer have officially offered Strong Thurman standout wide receiver Braylon Staley Six foot, 180 pound, four star wideout, quickly moving up the recruiting rankings, averaging more than 100 yards per game, six touchdowns on the year. He committed to Tennessee before the high school season started, just made a visit to Knoxville this past weekend. He has 28 Division I offers. And head over to WJBF.com on the sports page. Vote for the 44 Strong Football Friday Night Player of the Week. For Week 7, seven nominees to choose from. Voting closes Friday at 11. We'll announce the winner on Football Friday Night. This week's WJBF Scholar Athlete of the Week is North Augusta's Jordan Wiley. She's a star softball player for the Yellow Jackets, as part of the state championship team in 2021. Regionally, she was ranked number one in home runs and number six in RBI, but her leadership extends to the classroom as well. She's an honor student, 4.59 GPA, and was named an honor student at USC Aiken, Columbia College, Converse College, and USC Upstate. And her parents and coaches say her hard work makes her a leader on and off the field. Well, my mom always told me that school is first, and if I don't accomplish what I need to do in school, then I can't do what I need to do on the field. So I always make sure I always do school first and then softball. We work with her really hard just to make sure that she stays grounded and stay on key, keep God first. So to see that she's able to function and, and be surprised by the community, that's, that means a lot. Oh, I couldn't be more proud of her. I mean, it couldn't be any more, more deserving. Um, she works hard in school, and she works hard on the field, and um, you can always see the passion on both sides and the passion for her teammates as well. It's all that my teammates and my coaches make me, like, it's, like, really fun now to do softball, and I'm just, like, so excited. Still deciding whether or not she wants to play softball in college, but congratulations to her and her family. And uh, I'm going to tease tomorrow, show you a new food item the Braves are introducing just for the playoffs. Really? Oh, impressive. Nice. Okay. Look forward to that, brother. We'll be right back. We'll to tell you about an alligator with a unique jawline. Oh, he finally finds a home. We'll tell you about it right after the break. We're here at the Grand Oaks.com Facebook or Instagram. An alligator without an upper jaw has a new home at a crocodile shelter in Florida. Gatorland named the alligator Jolene, inspired by the Dolly Parton classic Jolene. Rescuers believe Jolene lost her upper jaw in an accident with a boat propeller or a fight with another gator. Jolene, that's so cute. I know. It's, <laughs> is it mean spirited though? I mean, it's Jolene, kind of really pointing out sweet Jolene's only flaw. How does Jolene I, I eat? I was just wondering. 
maybe with um, I don't know, humans hopefully helping her eating, yeah. helping her through yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, once it can't chew, I mean, it could just swallow things whole, I guess. Yeah, liquid diet. So I guess it wouldn't be that scary of a gator if you mm -hmm. uh, ran into Jolene. They need to protect her. <laughs> well, our forecast is going to show warm temperatures once again tomorrow, then a cool down over the weekend, showers on Friday morning, back to sunshine with 40s Sunday morning. And that is our poll for now. We do thank you for watching. Have a great night. Sweet.